more buffs to melee supports, some less meaningful changes, and Riot actually giving some love to Aphelios? Hey there, summoners. Riot has released the full list of changes we'll be getting on patch 13.4. It can be easy to get baited into thinking a buff means something is automatically good, and a nerf means something is instantly bad, but that's definitely not always the case. And that's why I'm here to break things down a bit. We'll get started with the system changes first, since these changes are a bit broad and potentially affect the meta a lot more than any champ-specific ones. A long overdue one here is the nerfing of range support items and buffing of the melee support items. The time it takes tribute stacks to charge up for the ranged items has gone up from 10 seconds to 12, while Spell Thief's Edge and Frost Fangs specifically have also lost 25% of their mana region. Shard of True Ice has lost 15%. Both melee support items have had their first and second forms get a 25% buff to their bonus health region. The goal here is pretty obvious. The issue for the past season or two has been that ranged champs can often cash in their tribute stacks instantly against melee champs, on top of constantly poking out their foe and keeping them from ever being able to go in. Since enchanter and mage supports also scale really well, this has left melee supports, with the exception of some outliers like Amumu, feeling pretty meh to pick. Why struggle on something you have to put a lot of effort into just to get above average results when you could just breeze through games on Nami or Janna while having insane presence? Now, with last patch's changes and these, the meta is finally getting a pretty good shakeup and it should feel pretty rewarding to expand your pool to include more of these melee and gauge supports. Most people don't know this, but it's actually a common high elo tactic to use magical footwear like a one-time use futures market. If you're just a couple of hundred gold short off your first item by the time you get the boots, you can trade them in for your big boy spike. But now the sell price on the boots is going down from 210 gold to 90, so that won't be quite as efficient. The next change we'll be looking at is to Demonic Embrace, specifically aimed at the jungle clear speed it gives. Demonic Embrace is having its burn damage capped against monsters, but I don't think this is actually going to be nearly enough to kill the item. The champs that abuse this well already have baseline good clear speeds in the jungle, especially by the time they're far enough into the game to buy this. It'll still be a very strong, offensively slated item for tanks and beefy AP bruisers. The Doran Shield nerf is interesting, but it isn't exactly a meta changer or anything. It'll be less efficient, with the health regen dropping down from 6 to 4, but will definitely still be the go-to when you want sustain against a lane opponent that looks to harass a lot. Jungle pets are having their AP ratio lowered from 15% down to 12. This is a pretty nice change, since the majority of champs in the top 10 for jungle since the start of preseason have been AP options. Riot is also targeting Snowball -y champs kinda heavily this patch. Treasure Hunter now gives 20 less gold per kill. That means the base gold is down from 70 to 50, and the total is reduced from 550 to 450. Additionally, the experience you get from kills between levels 3 and 8 will be going down as well, so you won't feel so hopeless after you get your first death in a game. The last change is reducing kill comeback experience. This is closely related to the last point, since getting a kill win behind before this patch could actually be even more snowbally than being the one to get the first kill in the lane. It's kind of interesting that they're reducing all this snowball power system side while also pushing the bot lane meta to be more aggressive, all-in lane heavy, since those champs typically are the really snowbally ones. Alright, with that stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the direct changes to champs. The armor and health increase Ari is getting will help in some of her closer AD matchups like Pantheon and Yasuo, but overall won't mean too much. The alt cooldown reduction is nice since it opens up more playmaking, but it's only 10 seconds, which isn't a lot considering the rank 1 cooldown is already over 2 minutes. Last patch, we predicted Alisar would be super strong with the buffs he was getting, and we were right. When played well, he's busted. That said, his stats aren't crazy good because there's a lot of people just trying to force him to work without any idea of what they're actually doing on him. Rather than waiting out the learning curve, Riot is immediately throwing more buffs at him. Giving him even more sustain and all-in power, along with the support item changes, are just going to make him even more broken once people get the hang of playing him. Amumu's changes this patch are super dull. He'll be a bit less squishy and do a bit less damage, but he's still going to be a super strong support that can set up kills both in 2v2s and 5v5s. He should still be holding on to his spot as the best engaged support. Anivia changes are on the PBE, but not the official change list Riot released, so it's not 100% sure if these are going to go live, but we'll talk about them just in case. Well, not that it really changes much, because it's just a slight nerf to her scaling health and armor. She'll still be super safe early, and an incredibly strong hard scaling champ even if these changes do go out. Sometimes a champ's performance is super disproportionately skewed towards pro play, and one of the biggest examples of that is Aphelios. 
Since his release, he's been a very strong pick off and on with the best of the best on the big stage, but in solo queue, he's basically always been bad after his very first round of nerfs. The attack speed buff to his passive is a nice move in the right direction, but it's not going to solve his core issue. He's super hard to play well, and even when you do, you need a team that works around you perfectly to get good results. Aurelion Soul's rework has been a huge success. Well, sort of. I guess that depends on your definition. If you're looking for a super healthy, balanced champ, he ain't it. He's easily one of the best in the game right now, even after his hotfix nerf immediately after he got re-released. He has a bit of a weak early game, but as long as you can make it out of lane phase alive, he's an insanely strong pick that can hard carry almost any game once you reach three items. The only change he's getting this patch is making it so you can't repeatedly spam his Q with no cooldown, but that doesn't really change anything about its power. It's not like the ability to do that is good, since it just drains his mana quickly and doesn't allow him to get bursts with his breath. He's still going to be super strong. Azir is having his soldiers nerfed, but his E and R buffed. Overall, this is a huge nerf, since his laning and consistent damage output in fights are going to be a lot weaker now, and Azir isn't a very front-loaded champ to begin with. He's already struggling in solo queue, and now he's just going to be a bit worse. Cho'Gath is another solo laner that's been struggling a lot lately. Despite some out-of-context clips in the preseason on social media, he's been by far the worst tank since the tank item update. His passive actually gives a lot of sustain, and he's never had mana problems, so it's interesting that this is the area Riot's looking to buff. Needless to say, that means he's not really getting any better. The Elise changes are kind of interesting. At first glance, you may think, well, that's not much damage off of her ganks, so she should still be really good, right? Well, that's true, once she's on you, she'll still wreck you, but think about how much slower her clear will be. That little bit of missing spiderling damage adds up a lot over a full jungle clear, especially when you couple it with the AP ratio on jungle pets being nerfed this patch. That, plus early game snowballing being a bit weaker, makes it so that she's just not quite as good as before. But she's definitely still very strong. Jarvan's buffs last patch left him incredibly broken, and even after a bit of a follow-up nerf to his W, we still think he'll be very good this patch. He can be a high damage threat and a beefy frontliner at the same time, so he has a lot of solo carry potential. Riot is being really cautious with their Jax buffs to the point that we think he's going to be pretty much unchanged. Maybe some closer matchups will be a bit less Jax favored now, but he's definitely still one of the best top laners for hard carrying in solo queue. Malphite, on the other hand, definitely needs some buffs, but targeting his W, which is effectively his least useful ability, isn't the way to go about it. It won't really affect much in either lane phase or team fights. Maokai is finally getting a meaningful nerf in the jungle. His Q damage is going up, but he's losing a lot of power in his saplings. Less damage, and more importantly, a longer cooldown means that the objective control that made him a god-tier jungler since the start of the preseason is going to be taking a big hit. That said, the rest of his kit is pretty broken, so he'll still be a strong jungle pick. He'll also remain a good support, and now there's the potential to see top lane Maokai make a big comeback. Orianna's getting some light buffs that don't really add up to a lot. Some of her hardest losing lanes are AD foes that can go for all ends like Akshan, Jace, and Kiana. Armor's nice against them, but it's going to take a lot more than three to make or break the matchup. Overall, don't expect her power to change too much. Riven's buff is pretty nice. Now that she can use her passive on turrets, you'll be able to push early leads on opponents a lot more since you'll have an easier time getting plates early. Plus, later on, she'll be a lot stronger in side lanes able to melt tier 2 and 3 turrets. Now, all of that said, there's still a lot of tough matchups in the meta for her, so she isn't suddenly a picker ban champ. The Samira changes are by far the most laughable on this whole patch. She's probably tied with Maokai for being the most broken champion this season, but unlike him, she's getting a little slap on the wrist nerf that will change nothing. Never does a Samira mow down your whole team and you're left thinking, man, if only she was a bit slower. The issue is, she counters every other marksman, so she's basically guaranteed to win bot lane. And she's super snowball-y, especially with IE second being a thing now. So she can go on to roll fights right out of lane phase. The lifesteal nerf also means next to nothing. An uninterrupted Samira ult already heals her to full HP anyways. If you don't stop her cast, she's still gonna outheal your damage most of the time. Senna is getting some nice buffs this patch. With melee supports getting yet another buff, I can see Grasp Senna making a strong comeback. That said, due to the whole meta getting a big shakeup, it's really hard to say where Senna will land after everything is live. She may be a lot stronger, or it might just be more of a power neutral change. We'll have to see. Riot lists Thresh changes as an adjustment to get players to change up their max order, but I don't think we'll be seeing that at all. Maxing Q then E is already the current meta, and all the changes are kinda just making that even better. 
Q's cooldown is going down at max rank, and both Q and E have 20 more damage at max rank. Maybe they made some last minute cuts and forgot what they were even going for here? Uh, either way, consider him a bit stronger than before due to the extra all-in power, but he isn't going to suddenly win lanes that he was previously losing really hard. Udyr is another champ getting some borderline unnoticeable changes. His clear is still going to be insanely fast, and he still has plenty of sticking power. With Maokai's nerfs being a lot heavier, Udyr might just be the best jungler going into this patch. While it's nice to see Riot going for changes that aren't just more damage here, less health there on a champ, the ones Vega are getting this patch aren't going to change a lot. The thing is, more range can be huge for a lot of champs, but this little angry Yordle is bound to playing around his cage, so it doesn't really do much for him. And lastly, we have Viego. It's kinda surprising to see him get some buffs, since Riot is usually pretty cautious since he pops off big time in higher levels of play. And these buffs are actually pretty meaningful. His passive being able to crit means the Kraken Slayer build has a lot more carrying power now, and the alt buff obviously means there's a lot more teamfighting strength once you get your first reset. And that wraps up our 13.4 patch preview. As always, thanks for joining me for today's video. I can't wait to see you back in our next one, but until then, good luck out there on the Rift. Later!